The innovation showcased the way startups, healthcare technology firms, and research institutions from Africa and beyond present groundbreaking solutions. It's time now to go meet up with Dave Lasker, uh, one of the medical experts at the exhibition, and also he's one of the inventors of Abby. Abby, A B B Y is a journey. A is you get on, you get a result, and it says green, yellow, red. This green is healthy, yellow is warning, red is stop. Okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. These are your health metrics. Wonderful stuff. And I guess it's obviously able to pick up things that you might not have known when you Correct. go into the world, whether it's a, a, a clinic or a hospital. It's very technical on that side, correct? We, we use, we're only measuring essentially uh, physically, she's standing on a weight platform, mm-hmm. so it measures the weight above her head. That saves time. Yeah. And now you go to someone else. So in a primary healthcare clinic, for example, at the state, mm-hmm. so if you go in there, the nurses now, they won't see you until you've got on Abby. So then what you do is you'll go to Abby. Now Abby's registered you, picks up your ID and number, it's got all your information. Then it sends it back to your phone. Then you walk literally into the nurse's office and she says, where's your SMS? You click, that shows you, then she looks down and then she starts asking you, I was talking to you and saying, well, do you know, you look, your blood pressure is like, do you know, this is like, and then they start asking you, well, what are you doing? Where do you live? What are you doing at home? How do you cook? Who cooks in your family? They start asking meaningful human mm-hmm. questions. Whereas before, you would walk into the clinic, I'm the doctor, I'm the nurse, I just write it on your file. Mm-hmm. I close your file up and I say to you, cheers, your blood pressure is okay. And uh, there's no extra suggestions in there. It's like, and you walk out and you think, I don't know what happened there, but I know nothing. I knew nothing when I walked in and I know nothing now. Absolutely. Do you think when it comes to healthcare, is it now an attitude thing? Or are we, are we, are we trying, is the healthcare industry trying to maybe work on people's attitude towards their health instead of maybe the curing? Or, or is it, because I'm looking at what technology is going to assist in doing. Yes. So... Let me ask you, I like what you're saying, let me give you an example if I may. Mm-hmm. So that we are sitting here chatting to one another mm-hmm. and we have both presume that we are walking, talking humans. Mm-hmm. We, we, we get that feedback from one another. Mm-hmm. So just for a moment, how did you and I arrive that we can walk and talk? Do you have any idea? Do you have any kids? Yeah, I've got a kid. How do you think people learn to walk and talk? How do they get it right? Repetition. And copying. Yes. And it's a copy, paste, repetitive, inquiring thing. Yes. So the kid walking tries to get up, falls over, tries again, then that balances a bit. It's period of time because you've got to have, first of all, the physical ability to do that. Mm-hmm. And then on the chatting, you know, when you watch your kid, you say something to a kid, the sentences are this long. How does the kid even begin to grasp that? Because originally the sentences were not that long, they were shorter. You were transferring words, ideas, you were transferring them across. And then that kid, even before they could speak, was nodding, was practicing, was smiling, was interacting. And now when the words start coming, you can see that they know so many more words than they are using. Mm-hmm. They've got that already, yes, yes. and they're practicing and refining how do they use those words. And then they say to you something, you know, bottle, and then eventually you encourage them, please can I have the bottle, you're expanding. Now, just like humans learn to walk and talk, okay? there is no shortcut. There is absolutely no shortcut to that, right? Mm-hmm. It's the same with your health. There is no shortcut, but people seem to think there is. They seem to think that if you come to me and I'm wearing a white coat and I say to you, hey, your pills, that now you're in a good health. You're not. You're not inquiring. You're not practicing. You're not trying to go through those steps. You're simply on your own, relying on 
some information which you might run into once a year, once every 10 years, you run into that information, which is too late. You, you've really developed bad habits. You don't know anything about uh, uh, life, health. You don't know anything about that. And you're trying to recover that. So just to give you, don't try this at home and don't repeat it. Your kid, um, if you took a kid and you put them in a cupboard for five years, don't do it. Mm -hmm. What Would that kid be able to walk and talk? No. So we live in a cupboard as far as our health is concerned. Oh. We have no exposure. We don't know what's going on. We're not exposed to it. And then people say to us, why are you in bad shape? Well, I haven't been practicing. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I haven't had the feedback. Oh, yes. So that is in my mind what's going on in the world with rising obesity. We think we've forgotten human development. We've forgotten about that. We just accept it. Look, people walk and talk. Mm -hmm. We don't understand what's going into it. Without the feedback, without this person, this everything mm -hmm. saying, come back, try, repeat, let me show you, let me give you the feedback, let me tell you what's going on. Then your awareness starts, never before. You can't have awareness before you've got feedback. That's so true, and I think, I think, I think COVID had a lot to do with, well, just waking us up a little bit in terms of our attitude towards healthcare. Yes. yes. Um, oh, so, and, and it's great to see technology leveraging. So that's my version in a very simple way, thinking about what's going on and what can I do about it. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've developed things like this. Oh, wow. Because I, I can't sit and talk to a thousand people, oh, yes. but Abby can. And that's why I say remove myself, use technology, use something, go and use it, question, check, go back again. Oh, so you don't to, need me. It's there to actually even assist doctors and nurses. I want them to provide the advice. I want someone to get off and say, what does it mean? And then they ask the nurse. But I don't want the nurse to measure them. She's wasting yes. her time. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. When you interact with your kid, you, you're not you, you're not in a clinical way going, sit down, I'm feeding you, then throw some food in, <laughs> and now you've done something. Mm -hmm. that, that's not how kids grow. Mm -hmm. That's not how they learn. Mm -hmm. Everything is about the experience. It's like, let me put my fingers in and play with it, and let me feel it and touch it, and then mm -hmm. what is it? And that's mm -hmm. how they learn. Mm -hmm. But if I sat them on the chair and said, eat, eat, and then never spoken a word, what, what's the chances of that kid learning anything? Mm. How do you see digital influencing the study of medicine? It's very... It, look, the, it, again, it, you have to collect data and you have to collect lots of data. What we're going to do, I'll give you an example. At one mine, in Bala Platinum are in, the, are in the news right now, I'm afraid mm. of that tragic... Uh, yes, 11 people. That's but, terrible. So we, mm. we, we, we provide them with Abby's for their occupational health. Oh, yes. We're going to measure on the one mine this year over 200,000 measurements. They've got about 50,000 employees. They're going to collect a massive amount of data and then they're going to look at that data and start saying, how do we help our people? And I'll give you an amazing story about them. When we went to go and see them about three years ago and said, has a story your nurse can use it they said okay we need it for our health because it's the it's the collection of the data which is digital we get that we said then what you want to do is talk about to your people about their health and their wellness they said look we do occupational health in the last two after they've been using it for three years last year they called us and they said this data that we're getting now is it true is are our people as bad as this data is showing, is it? yes, and you can check that by putting them on again and again and again. So don't listen to us, follow the data. Then they find us and say, come through, let's have a chat. They have completely changed their entire worldview. They see it as an occupational health tool, but their focus is now on the individual's wellness. They are spending allocation source resources dietitians nurses they're training them all up with uh, where do i talk to who do i talk to they've completely changed their whole view to we better look after our people 
and it's amazing to watch how the power of data has converted them into doing something so beneficial. So powerful story. So that's why data analytics is a buzzword.